If a central bank digital currency was a part of our future, if something like this was being discussed by elites around the world, do you think that the mainstream media would clue you in? If a cash ban, if a cash phase out was being discussed by the IMF, the World Bank, the Fed, China, Canada, Russia, do you think that MSNBC, Fox News, CNN would let you know? Everybody who's watching this video, before I play you this clip, before I prove something to you, let me ask you a question. Do you think that the mainstream media helps us or hurts us? I want your opinion. To what degree does the mainstream media, I'm talking CNN, NBC, MSNBC, Fox, to what degree do they help the average person, if any? They sure have us focused on some important issues right now. They sure are good at keeping us distracted and dividing us. But what if I told you that unbeknownst to you, within the past seven days alone, while you were being distracted by Fox, CNN, by the debates, the real people in charge, i.e. the leaders that you didn't vote for, are discussing policies and making decisions behind the scenes that will affect you the rest of your life. I could use almost any major country as an example. I could show you China. I could show you Russia. I could show you the United States, the United Nations. Almost every major government or governing body around the world is doing the same thing. And today, we're going to use Canada as our primary example because this just happened. But if you're a subscriber to our channel, you know that this is not just a Canada thing. This clip is a microcosm for all governments. So, that being said, like the video and watch the Deputy Governor of the Bank of Canada in a meeting discussing the future of money, watch how a cash phase-out, watch how a cash ban is continually kept at the forefront of the conversation while discussing CBDCs and the future of money. We're seeing cash uh, uh, being used less and less in everyday transactions. We know that cash is attractive to people partly because it's private, um, nobody can see what how you're transacting, but we know there's a dark side to that as well. And so, of course, no central bank would want to or would indeed be allowed to issue a digital currency that would then provide a seamless and 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 per infinitely scalable means of money laundering, uh, terrorist financing, and all those bad things. And so, I mentioned one of the aspects of central bank digital currency is the sort of financial inclusion aspect, the sense that uh, that if cash uh, disappears from acceptability. Um, there are people who will be excluded from the whole economy. And uh, um, you have to think about, well, could you combine, could you design a technology that would actually combine a, uh, uh, an, a, a suitable degree of privacy with, um, with, a, uh, with, 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 a, with some safeguards against all those illicit uh, and abusive transactions? So, so let me ask you a question. How long do you think a CBDC, how long do you think something like this would take to get implemented and launched. I think, because this is not something the mainstream media covers, I think that this is going to launch a whole lot sooner than any of us think. In fact, here is, here's what the Bank of Canada has to say about it. The world is changing very rapidly, and we can certainly see circumstances where a central bank digital currency could be a desirable addition to the array of products available um, for payments. We've actually used the word CD, CBDC to refer to, to the, 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 uh, the thing that would be available to the general public, whereas uh, we've also, you know, we, we, but we're also at the same time developing uh, digital versions of bank, uh, uh, of central bank money that, that, that can be used for transactions. And, and uh, the, the main point is that this, uh, this is all looking a lot more urgent um, because of the speed with which technology is evolving. And, and particularly, I think, with COVID, um, we've seen uh, uh, an acceleration of the shift of activities online. And that suggests that, uh, that if, if we want to be ready to, uh, explore, to develop any kind of digital central bank product, we need to move faster than we thought was going to be necessary. The key thing there is that the world is changing so quickly that um, if we want to have something that's actually viable and could uh, could be launched uh, in, in a suitable time frame. We need to be moving pretty uh, quickly and deliberately to develop something. And so we've actually been exploring not just the the sort of 
theoretical question of, well, would it be a good thing, but actually um, actually exploring the specifics of, well, exa exactly how would it be designed? What would it look like? How would we organize it, uh, the, the provision? Now, like I said, this isn't just a Canada thing. This is a world thing. The people who control our money today understand that the world is changing and they need to change with it in order to keep control. This is the director of operations of the IMF just today discussing the same thing with the head of the Federal Reserve along with many other world leaders. Did you vote for these people? Me neither. Yet somehow they control our money. So watch them recognize that the world is changing and realize that they need to change with it to keep control. I used to say the future is digital until uh, I realized the future has arrived. And uh, Jay, you helped me realize that very much in, uh, in the summer. You said uh, the following, that you do not want to wake up one day and realize that the dollar is no longer a world reserve, reserve currency because we just missed a technological uh, change. Uh, I have full confidence this is not going to happen with you at the helm. Uh, but can you, can you unpack a little bit this, uh, this thought? Uh, do you see a first mover advantage uh, in introducing CBDC? Uh, do you think that technology might put us in a difficult place by, by changing the options in front of us? How do you think in the fact about uh, this technology being already present and pressing uh, on this issue? And don't be fooled, guys. Yes, they're discussing this in public, but no, they're not giving us all the information. This is what the Fed chair, Jerome Powell, this is how he responded. He really emphasizes how, you know, they're going to take things nice and slow and there's nothing to worry about right now. But I would bet that things are going on behind the scenes with the Fed. And as soon as they can launch this thing, they're going to launch it because they know that China is doing that right now. So listen to how Jerome Powell responds and plays it down. If you got value in this video, make sure you subscribe, give it a like. And like always, guys, remember, Bitcoin is a way to opt out of this system. And if you want to find out more information on that, subscribe to the channel. Stay informed. Watch this. Thank you. So the, the sense of that comment was really that I feel that we have an obligation to stay on the forefront of policy and technological innovation and developments as regards payments, cross-border payments, CBDC, all of those things, rather than that I felt anything needed to happen quickly or imminently. In fact, I, I actually do think this is one of those issues where it's more important for the United States to get it right than it is to be first. Um, given the dollar's important role globally, it's essential that we remain on the frontier of research and policy development. The dollar is the world's principal reserve currency, and there continues to be large uh, global demand for Federal Reserve notes. There's about $2 trillion worth of Federal Reserve notes in circulation, and we estimate that somewhere close to half of that value in notes is held outside of the United States. <clears throat> Use of and trust in the dollar from, uh, comes from the reliable rule of law, strong and transparent institutions, deep financial markets, and an open capital account. A healthy and efficient payment system demands these features which reach far beyond the merely technological. So we do think it's more important to get it right than to be the first, and getting it right means that we not only look at the potential benefits of a C CBDC, but also the potential risks and, and also recognize the important trade-offs that have to be th thought through carefully. We have a responsibility both to the U.S. and to the world that any steps taken for a U.S. Cent uh, digital currency be taken safely. We're absolutely committed to the soundness of the dollar and to safe and efficient U.S. dollar payment system. So in addition to assessing the benefits, and, and there may well be benefits, there are also some quite difficult uh, policy and operational questions that need to be thoroughly evaluated. And just to mention a few, I, I would mention um, the need to uh, protect a CBDC from cyber attacks, counterfeiting, and fraud, the question of how a CD, CBDC would affect monetary policy and financial stability, um, and also how could a CBDC prevent illicit activity while also preserving user privacy and security. Assuming that those things can be resolved, yes, there are potential benefits, but it's no that's that's going to take a lot of work and thought, we believe. 
So they're not simple questions and the answers are gonna to need to be comp comprehensively understood. Um, uh, so I'll stop there, thanks. Yeah.